All right, I got some more questions I'm going to try and get to today. And these are uh, all related to the EM5 Mark III. But of course, you know, a lot of these settings apply across all of the Olympus uh, OMD cameras anyway. But anyhow, um, this one is from uh, Jamaro and it says, I have the EM5 Mark III. And in the instructions, it says that being in that option, the function of taking the focus point with the finger on the screen and the eye in the viewfinder is activated or deactivated, giving two touches on the screen. I do not get it. Sometimes it works for me, sometimes it doesn't. And when it doesn't work for me, I can't activate it by double tapping the screen twice. So what Jamar is referring to is when you put your eye up to the EVF, uh, you should be able to move the focus point around with just your finger by touching the screen. And the instructions say to activate it, you know, you double tap it. And to deactivate it, you double tap again. So it just toggles it on and off by double tapping. So we need to check a couple of settings first uh, for the benefit of everyone. And then uh, I'll show you specifically how to use that. All right, so let's go into the menu and uh, go into the custom menu. And then we're going to go all the way down to the J menu right here. And we want to make sure that touchscreen settings is turned on. Uh, otherwise, it'll be completely deactivated. The other setting we need to check is in the autofocus menu. So we'll go back in the custom menu, and I think it's, uh, yeah, right here on A2, AF targeting pad. Also need to make sure that this is turned on. Now on the back of the live view, uh, there's a touchscreen button here that activates the touchscreen for the live view or this monitor, not for the EVF. So you can ignore whatever this is set to. I'm just going to turn it off for this video, but this has no effect on what goes on in the uh, EVF. All right, so now I'm just putting the TG5 here over the EVF. So what you're looking at here is the EVF on the EM5 Mark III. And when I touch the uh, screen, you can see I can move the focus point around. And you don't have to like stretch your thumb all the way up to this corner to get to the corner. You can just kind of, uh, you know, just continue swiping in one spot and it'll just keep moving. And that's all there is to it. Uh, and then the front and rear dials, like the front dial will change the target area to, you know, nine point or all points. And then the rear dial uh, activates face detect on and off. All right, now to activate and deactivate this feature, the instructions say to double tap the screen. So if we double tap the screen, you'll see a little icon up here uh, that says off. So now when I try and select the focus point, I can't select anything. And this little icon pops up again while I'm touching the screen. And then if I want to reactivate it, I can double tap the screen. And then this icon now says on. And now I can select a focus point. Now you need to be aware that you cannot double tap while you're actually trying to select a focus point. Uh, you can't activate and deactivate it while you're selecting a point. So you need to actually be looking through the lens when you double tap. And then you'll get that icon that lets you know that it's on or off. So right now we're off. I'll double tap. Now we're on. And that's all there is to it. Now I know those icons were a little hard to see the way I had it set up. But when you bring your camera up to your eye, you, you'll be able to see all those icons I was trying to show you very clearly. All right, the next question here is from uh, Ilko. And he says, hey, Rob, maybe you can help me with this. Since uh, last week, I got a secondhand EM1 Mark II. And I can't find a way to... I'll get the live view as I'm used to in the M mode with my other cameras. Normally the image is under or overexposed, the view will be darker or brighter. Now I can only see if the photo is exposed correctly after I've taken the photo. The uh, SOVF is off, which is the uh, simulated optical viewfinder, and I cannot find the correct setting to change it. In the other modes, it's working just fine. All right, I'm going to show you on my EM5 Mark III, but it's exactly the same on the EM1 Mark II. So let's just go into the menu. I'm going to go into the custom menu and then go all the way down to the display menu or D and go into D2, select live view boost, click on that. And then you'll see all these different settings here on one, on two. And I have a whole video on live view boost, but uh, long story short, in manual mode, the default setting set to on one, which is showing you uh, very similar to uh, simulated optical viewfinder. But just turn this off and you should be good to go. Because you'll notice that in the other modes, as you were saying, it works fine. It's turned off. So you need to turn it off for manual shooting as well. All right, this next question here is from Peter. And uh, this has to do with the M5 Mark III and the custom mode C1, 2, and 3. 
And as you know, on the M5 Mark III, there's only one C uh, position on the mode dial. Uh, but you can recall from the menu uh, custom modes 2 and 3 individually that way. And he set up custom modes for C1, C2, and C3, uh, all in manual mode, but with, you know, variations of each. And the question is, uh, he wants to change C2 to shutter priority mode, but use all of the same settings he had when he was in manual mode, save for, like, aperture, right? Because that's going to be controlled by the camera when you go into shutter priority mode. All right, so I've tried to duplicate basically the core of what you set up initially, and that is to set up uh, manual mode with variations and settings into all three custom modes. So I have the camera currently right now in C mode or custom mode, and I can recall each of the custom settings that I saved. So I can just recall C1, which is by default, when you put the camera into C mode, it chooses that first. But C1 I have basically set to natural color profile and a single target point. I go into the menu and recall C2. Um, you can see C2 I have set for monochrome and a nine point target group. And if I go back into the menu and recall C3, you can see that C3 I have set to an art filter with all target points set. Well, let's go into the menu and recall custom mode two because that's the one you want to change to shutter priority mode because currently custom mode two is monochrome, nine point group, in manual mode. Now what you're asking is you want to change C2 to be shutter priority mode but with all of the same settings you had when it was in manual mode. So intuitively you'd think that all you'd have to do is go ahead and put the camera into shutter priority mode and you'll see that I'm currently in a pop art filter with all points selected. But just go into the menu and assign, I'm sorry, recall custom mode 2 and that will bring back monochrome and the nine point group. And now we're in shutter priority mode. And you go in, you assign the C2 like that. So now C2 should be shutter priority mode with monochrome and nine points. And this is the problem you're running into, right? You go into C mode. And right now we're in natural, right? Which is C1. You go in, you recall C2, and it's back to manual mode. Even though our monochrome and nine point group is now changed, the actual uh, mode of the camera didn't change the shutter priority. Now, the reason the camera behaves this way is because the mode dial takes priority over all of the other settings. So, for example, you know, if I'm in aperture priority mode, I can't put the camera into shutter priority mode without turning this dial uh, and vice versa. If I'm in shutter priority mode, I can't force the camera into aperture priority mode without turning the dial. And this is what happens when you put it into C mode, right? So I have the mode dial on C. Whatever you save C1 as, in this case, you saved it as manual. That's the same thing as changing the letter C here to the letter M. So now the camera is in manual mode, regardless of whatever uh, settings you set in C2 and C3. They're going to be forced to be in manual mode. So C1 sets the priority to whatever you set uh, originally. So in your case, you set it to M. Like I said, that's just like changing the letter C on the mode dial to the letter M. So that is the problem, and that is also the solution. So all you have to do is put the camera into shutter priority mode and then recall C2 from the menu, and that'll bring back all of your customized settings, save for the fact that you're now forcing the camera to be in shutter priority mode. So just a quick demonstration, let's go ahead and uh, recall C2. I think I just did that, but we'll do it again. So we can see C2 is a monochrome nine point manual mode. Let's put the camera into shutter priority. Currently, the camera is in an art filter with all points selected. All we have to do is uh, recall C2. And now we're in shutter priority, but we have all of the other custom settings that we saved, monochrome and nine point. I hope that makes sense and helps you out with your problem there. And, and if I missed the mark completely, just let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll try again. But uh, 
But now I have another question here from uh, Larry. And uh, this was from my uh, previous video about some birds and flight stuff. But he asked me, um, do I ever use the tracking feature? And the answer is no. The, the tracking, like CAF plus TR, that's unreliable. Just don't use that. Um, I've seen some others try to say it works well, but no. Uh, and then um, the second question here is, have you tried the uh, TC 1.4 teleconverter? On the 300 millimeter f4, what do you think? Uh, I tried it and I found that I'm not able to tell the difference between a photo shot with the TC and one I just cropped without using the teleconverter. So last year, I actually did try using the 1.4 teleconverter with my 300 f4, and I did a comparison shot here. So I was standing in the same location, same bird, everything, uh, except one is with the teleconverter, one is without. So Obviously, this one on the left here is without the teleconverter, and this is with the teleconverter. And if I zoom in on this one, uh, let's see, and move that over, and then let's zoom in on this one. I don't see much difference either, and I haven't done any processing uh, to these uh, images other than uh, white balance and a little bit on the exposure because uh, one was a little bit darker, but uh, I didn't do any sharpening or noise reduction or anything like that. And, you know, I can say that the one on the right with the teleconverter, I do see a little bit more detail here in the branch. And, you know, by extrapolation, we should get a little more detail here in the bird. Uh, but there wasn't a huge difference. Um, you know, I could just sharpen this one up a little bit and get pretty much what I got over here. But I think, um, you know, just to kind of give you an overview of, you know, the, the entire scene. You can see the bird here was probably less than one megapixel of the frame versus over here, right? Uh, where it's a little bit, you're getting a little better pixel density uh, on the bird. Now, try not to draw any conclusions from that one example because... Uh, you know, there's a lot of variables that go into using super telephoto length type shots like that. And uh, that could be having, you know, a major impact on the results that you saw there. Uh, so that said, you know, I've seen a lot of great images taken using the 1.4 and the 2.0 teleconverters. And the, the reviews are kind of mixed. Some people get great results and love it. Other people are like, meh, you know, kind of like you and I right now. So again, don't make any decisions off that one example. Uh, but I did want to share with you at least the one that I did have. Uh, but keep testing it out if you can. You know, do some more research and, and then make your decision from there. It may, it may be the right uh, gear for you. It may not. Uh, for me, I decided against it. And that's all I have for today. So thank you so much for watching. And if you find these videos helpful and would like to support the channel, consider buying me a coffee or making a donation in the links below because they help me continue to make videos like this for you. And they are greatly appreciated. Thank you again so much for watching. And I hope to see you again soon.